Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. In honor of back to school, I wanted to film a story time for you guys, telling you guys some of my experiences when I was in university. On my Instagram, I did tease two stories that I already have, and you guys requested to hear both of them. So the first one we're gonna start off with, as the title suggests, is the time when I almost died on my way to work, and police officers showed up um, at my workplace. I think I'm catching a cold, so please ignore my voice right now. I'm literally sick every single month, but it's not like sick to the point where I'm like blowing my nose and stuff. It's just sick where I have like a head cold and my throat hurts and I have a stuffy nose constantly. So hopefully it doesn't get too annoying and my voice sounds okay. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha and I typically post a lot of beauty, makeup, lifestyle, and sometimes hair related videos. If that is something that you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. And without further ado, Let's get started. So a little bit of background before we get started. I'm from Toronto, as most of you guys know, but when I went to school, I was in Ottawa. It's about five hours away. I was in third year, so this would have been about January or February 2016, around that time, I was 19 years old. When I was in third year, I lived in a three bedroom home that my mom actually purchased, so we were renting from her. I lived with my best friend, and fun facts, we're actually born on the same day, June 29, but she's a year older than me, so let's call her Sophia. And then we had another roommate, let's call him Matthew. And Matthew was, you know, someone that Sophia had found online, he needed a room. That's how roommates go <laughs> when you're in university. But he was a really cool guy, like very nice and everything. I think he was a year older than me as well. So I was the youngest <laughs> in the house. In January, my best friend from home, my best friend from high school, let's call her Jade, um, she was moving to Ottawa, a different school but still in the same area. So she spent the first semester on campus. So the next semester she eventually moved in with me as well. But at the time she was just moving to Ottawa by herself in her dorm. So she did not know anybody else but me in all of Ottawa. I was like her only friend. She doesn't, she's new to the city, doesn't know anything about the city. So we had spoke the night before, me and Jade. This was her first weekend in the city and we were supposed to go out downtown and meet up and just, you know, talk and stuff because I hadn't seen her in like a year. And <clears throat> so the morning of, I was working at Pier 1. That's an interior decorating store. And I was really obsessed, I still am, really obsessed with home decor. So working up here one was like a dream for me because we could rearrange the store and I love being around furniture and colors and pillows. It just makes me feel so happy. So I worked up here one for about two and a half years at the Toronto location and the one in Ottawa. The one in Ottawa, I had just gotten my job there. And I think it was like two weeks or so since I started working there. I was the only black person at the time who worked there. We eventually did have other agents that were, you know, different ethnicities and stuff. But at the time, I was the only black person that worked there. So I don't know if you guys know, but when you're a minority, you are kind of the representative of your entire race in whatever room you go into. And it's a really odd feeling, especially if you're the only black person in a room. You are literally the spokesperson for your entire race. It's a lot of pressure to know that, like, whatever that you say, what you do will be this person's, you know, only perception of a black person other than what they see on TV. So there's always this type of pressure that you have to look your best and do your best and make sure that you put your brace on this like pedestal so you get rid of all those stereotypes. That's kind of what was going through my mind at the time. And that's the type of feeling that I think every minority goes through, but in, it's very important to point out for the purposes of this video. With all that backstory out of the way, the morning of I had called Jade um, to make sure that we were meeting up in the evening to double check with her. So this was maybe 8 o'clock in the morning that I was leaving home for my shift at Pier 1. So I got in my car. It was like snowy outside. We had a blizzard the night before and like everything was just settled. I literally just like shoveled where my car needed to drive out of the driveway and that was it. So I shoveled that and I got in my car. Now this car was like a 2003 Mazda Tribute. Like it was hanging on its last leg. This was my mom's vehicle and um, she got a new car so I took this one when I was in school. And um, like it was such an old car. Like the muffler was literally like dragging against the floor. The brakes weren't really that good. 
Honestly, I should not have been driving that car, but I really wanted to drive since I was living in a home. It's cold in Ottawa, negative 40 degrees in the winter sometimes, and I just don't want to be waiting for a bus, okay? Before I actually started driving, I left her voicemail telling her like we're gonna meet up and so on and so forth, and I hung up and threw the phone on the seat beside me. So as I said, the brakes of the car really weren't working that well. And I remember that morning, I when I drove out of my driveway, I drove down like the, the road and everything, there was a stop sign by my house. And obviously you have to come to a full stop, which I typically do, but with this car, if you press on the brakes at all, the car will stop and it won't actually start running again. You will have to then sit there and pump on the brakes for it to actually go. So for the most part, whenever I see a red light or a stop sign, I slow down the car so I never actually come to a full stop and then wait for the green light to go. That morning I did it again at a stop sign and I looked over to my right and there was a police car right there just watching me do a rolling stop. I just kept driving past the stop sign very slowly. I looked at him, he looked at me, we made eye contact and I just mouthed to him, I am so sorry and I just kept going. Thank God he didn't stop me because he really could have and I could have been fined but my car doesn't work, what am I supposed to do? As I'm merging onto the highway, I look back you know, to make sure that I can merge without anybody there and my wheels go on some black ice. I've never driven on black ice before and I'm such a careful driver but in that moment I was like oh my god you could feel that the car was not on the ground it was on some slippery surface and I tried not to panic I was like okay what did the book tell me what did the book tell me steer into the direction that you want to go so there was no one there I was on this patch of black ice and I just tried to steer my way through the actual snow and, and the ice and everything that was on the ground without losing control of the vehicle. But once again, my brakes don't work. So the vehicle started spiraling a little bit out of control. I started screaming because I couldn't brake at all and it was really scary. I was just kind of driving in and out. Thank God there was no one beside me, but I was kind of swerving in and out of my lane. I mashed on the brakes and the car did not go in the direction that I wanted to go. It went over the island in the middle of the highway and onto the other side of traffic. Now I'm screaming at the top of my lungs because I am scared about what's going on. I think I'm gonna start torpedoing in a circle and like gonna crash somewhere, but I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. I go over the island onto the other side of oncoming traffic. I mash on the brakes and finally the car stops. I'm sitting here hyperventilating because I cannot believe what just happened. I'm alive. I did not crash. I'm on the other side in the middle of the road. I look over to my right and I see a bunch of oncoming traffic come to me. So I'm like, listen, I don't have time to freak out. I need to turn around, get off the highway and get my butt to work. So I put the car in reverse, I turn around, I get off the highway, I get back on the highway and now I'm hyperventilating again because I literally just went through a traumatic experience and I'm back at the scene of the crime. So I just kept driving, hyperventilating my way to work. I finally get to work and I realize that my phone is still on so I just hung up the phone. I get into work and I'm calming myself down. I didn't tell anybody what just happened. I'm calming myself down, kind of like breathing in and out, <laughs> good stuff. So I start to work just like a normal day. About two hours into my shift, the police show up at my workplace. And here I'm thinking, what the hell did I do? I thought that maybe it was like one of the people in the car is like one of the oncoming traffic people who saw my license plate and called the police to make sure I was okay. And um, you know, they, they came in the room, they said, is Lakeisha here? Then we're all like, okay, well that's Lakeisha. Once again, the only black person at this establishment. They don't know me. They don't know who I am. And I'm just like, the first impression that I'm giving to you is that a police is showing up. Like that, oh, I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, am I gonna lose my job? <laughs> it is getting so dark outside, I have to turn on the light. This is the first black person that they've hired and now police is here, two weeks later. So I'm honestly so scared of losing my job, of what they're gonna think of me, what did I do? And you know, the officer talks to me 
And he's like, you need to call your friends because they are really worried about you and you know, you should go and you know, talk to them and stuff. He made sure I was okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I told him what happened and everything. He's like, okay, well, you know, you need to get your car checked, of course, um, and call your friends. So I tell my boss and they all huddle around me at the register and I tell them, you know, what happened and everything. They're all like, oh my God, like, I can't believe that happened to you. Like they're as shocked as I am. So my boss is like, okay, just go answer your phone. Go make sure your friends know that you're okay. So I go in the back and I look at my phone. There's like 40 messages. There are 25 phone calls, 40 text messages from all of my roommates and as well Jade. And so I'm just like, I'm messaging them. I'm like, guys, I'm okay. Like I tell them what happened really quickly and I come back to work. So that evening when I met up with Jade, like we were supposed to, she told me what actually happened. So. That morning when I called Jade and left a voicemail and then hung up and threw my phone beside me, the phone didn't actually hang up. So while I was having my whole ordeal, spinning out of control on the highway, going over the island onto the other side, I was screaming at the top of my lungs. She heard all of this in a voicemail. In her mind, she told me that like, she literally just came to the city. She doesn't know anybody here. She, I'm the only person that she knows and she gets a voicemail of someone screaming like an ax murderer is chasing them. And so she goes to her school police and she plays in the voicemail and she's like, I don't know where she is. She's the only person that I know in this city. Like, I don't know what to do, that she doesn't know where I work. She doesn't know the city. She doesn't know anything at all. And she's like out of her mind, scared and everything. And that's how the she called the police and the police called my friends at home and that is where they told them that I worked at Pier 1, the location that I did. And that's why the police showed up at my workplace. And I almost gave my best friend a heart attack. So yeah, that was really fun. I've actually never even told my mom that story to be honest. Well, mom, if you're watching, now you know. And that summer when I went home, I did get a new car because the brakes did not work. Hopefully you guys will take that as a lesson and make sure that your brakes work because mine didn't and I almost died. So yeah, hopefully you guys found this video entertaining. Um, remember to click over here to see some of my previous videos and as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous because I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye.